All right, familiarize yourself with any manual supplied. Read and follow all safety precautions. Do not modify any equipment without authorization. The reason we say this on these trucks, they are smart aerials. They have cabin body collision protection. If you put a light somewhere on the body or on the cab, the aerial doesn't know it's there. It'll come across, hit it, knock it off. Now you lost the light. Let us know, we can bring in a computer, calibrate the truck to know that that light's there. <clears throat> and practice good housekeeping. It's a grease ladder, it's gonna drip grease off every now and then. Just clean it up. Safety harness must be worn by anybody on the crew, on the aerial. <clears throat> and positioning the truck, I'm not gonna hit this jet too hard guys, you guys know how to position a truck. Just know, stabilizers, yeah, firm, yeah. You, you guys are in an E1 right now. When you get in this truck, you know that your E1, your jacks go straight out and then they come down. So that means you're trying to center yourself in an area. What you want to do with our truck is you want to cheat a little bit away from where you want to go to so that you can get the jacks as far out as you can on that side to do that. So you're gonna, you need to learn a little bit. You need to practice some go out there and set this up and you're going to find yourself you want to cheat away from where what your object is so that you can set those jacks down because we can put the jacks straight down on the driver's side if you're going over to the crew side or the officer side so that's something that you're going to have to kind of like change your thinking the way you position your truck sorry nope that's fine just make sure you guys have firm ground for setting up those stabilizers you guys know that uh, set the truck for an uphill grade. With maximum grade, the truck should be positioned with the cab facing uphill. This can reduce the truck's grade by extending those rear stabilizer jacks so you can lift the back of the truck up, keep those front tires in contact with the ground. We do not, if you're on flat ground, we do not want to actually lift the truck off of the ground. We like to just take the bubble out of the tires, and that's it. Disadvantage of this, since only the front tires are on the ground, there's less resistance to prevent uh, the truck from rocking and stuff like that. It's not as smooth with the tires off the ground. The rear compartments and aerial access stuff are a little bit hard to get at. You guys have that extendable step on the back of the truck, so it's no big deal. <clears throat> Set the front of the truck to a downhill grade. Rear compartments are closer to the ground, and you have a little bit better resistance, more tires in contact with the ground. Disadvantage of this, you cannot reduce the truck's grade by extending those front stabilizer jacks. Front tires must be stay in contact with the ground. Say that, you extend the ladder out straight over the front of the truck, you have a chance to teeter. It's more common with a platform, but there's a possibility that you get a little bit of teeter-totter. Going down hills is still recommended that you work over the cab. Does the cab need to be going down hill? With the cab facing downhill, you can still work over the cab. It, it depends on the grade. Like I said, this truck will not let you do anything. If you set this truck up outside of five degrees, so five degrees front or back, right to left, it won't operate. It'll flash caution symbols at you telling you this is unsafe to operate. It'll let you get it out of the bed a little bit and do some stuff, but it will not let you go full bore. It doesn't matter if your outriggers are fully set or not. It you all- still have to get it level up as best you can, Dad. Get it in that five degrees, just like you did now. Five degrees is a lot when you think about it. <clears throat> and there's less ballast for aerial operations with the rear tires on the ground. <clears throat> Common sense stuff, exhaust boom, fumes, uh, cooling systems, just ensure there's adequate clearance between the fan and the shroud. Uh, do not alter the fan ratio. Observe the fan clutch operation to ensure the fan is disengaging when it should not, or should be. And then air intake, don't alter any intake piping. Safety around the vehicle. Notify others when working underneath it. Keep away from moving parts. Avoid hot areas such as transmissions, exhausts, and pumps. And then avoid ports that may eject steam. Do not stand, sit, or climb on open doors. Some are spring-loaded. They will shoot back at you. Uh, use care to not get fingers caught in hand points. Don't drive with the doors partially closed. And do not operate the vehicle with damage or improperly inflated tires. Precautions for driving safety. Safety and aerial operations. Keep steps, handrails, walking surfaces free of grease. <clears throat> Do not use the pump fixtures that are lights and stepping surfaces. Uh, think about your moves. What are you going to do when you're climbing? Uh, and use a three-point stance. 
backing up the vehicle, stay with what you guys are currently doing. Vehicle insured, uh, insured proper tire inflation. There's a neutral safety switch. So if you guys pull up, shut the truck down and it's still in drive, when you come back, it'll automatically be in neutral for you. <clears throat> Allow starter to cool for one minute. If it does not start within 15 seconds, then familiarize yourself with all the onboard gauges and accessories. Watch your turning. Increase uh, overhang, particularly at the rear of the truck, must be kept in mind. Know your travel height, 11 feet 5 inches. Total weight, uh, truck's not packed yet, so I'm not sure what it is. There's a height five on it. Uh, ground clearance is 8 degrees, it's the lowest point of the truck. High center of gravity, uh, speeding around a corner is dangerous, just always remember that about 60% of your weight is above you. Let me uh, add something to that. This truck has what's called ESC, it's electronic stability control, and if you go too fast into a corner, this truck's going to know it, it's going to know that it's tipping, and it's going to take throttle away from you, and it'll also apply the brakes if needed. It's going to bring the vehicle back under control. So when that happens to you, don't ro run in the garage and say, hey, this thing slowed me down. Can we turn that off? You don't want it off. It's there for a reason. NFPA says when the center of gravity is at a certain height on a truck, we have to include that system on it. So just so you guys are aware. You got a picture of you guys' truck here, 100 foot Viper aerial on a Commander chassis with a Cummings ISX uh, 12 liter, 500 horsepower engine. Before tilting the cab, check the following, the front storage box is clear. Uh, no equipment on the front bumper and inside, make sure all the radios, air packs, helmets, that kind of stuff are out of the truck. <clears throat> Before tilting the truck, you must set the jacks. You don't have to go out, just go straight down with it. Lift the aerial up 20 degrees and go to the front driver's side compartment where the uh, hose or the electrical reel is. And that's where your cab tilt switch is. Safety bar will lock in. Uh, check the area when you're ready to lower it. Check to make sure it's clear. Pull the cable until your safety lock is away. Hold the button down and the cab will automatically lock in. Generator is the next compartment back on the left side. It's equipped with uh, GFI breakers and it allows you to see line voltages and frequencies. <clears throat> on the left here is your master battery. Up on the right, your ignition and your engine start and then auto charge in your uh, shoreline. Regen and regen inhibit. Uh, I'll let Jeff <laughs> talk about that. I can give you a breakdown of it, but He'll knock that out better. You want to go now with that or? Yeah, uh, the, these engines all have DEF systems on them. And uh, it, there's, the exhaust system has to cleanse itself. And one of the things that we've done with this truck and that Cincinnati has decided, it, there's a generator on this truck. And then when that truck's idling, that's when it gets dirty. The longer it idles, the more it'll build up soot into the exhaust system. And then it triggers to burn that off. And when it burns it off, RPMs are gonna come up or you can be driving down the road and you'll see it come up. You'll see a little turbo thing and a little engine thing come up. And that tells you that it's burning that off. If you're, if you're not on a run or something, and you got time, just go ahead and run it until it burns itself out. Now, if you're doing something and you don't want it doing that because it's gonna kick it up to high idle, you can inhibit that. But you don't want to inhibit it any more than what you have to because what happens is if that filter ever gets clogged, it's about 10 grand to get that filter replaced. So you want it to do the regen. Let it do its regen, it burns that soot out of there. But the generator system on this truck, after you park somewhere and your truck's sitting there idling and you're out doing whatever you need to do, the engine on this truck, 
after a certain period of time is going to shut down three minutes and that that generator is going to start itself and it's going to run your systems on the truck it won't run the aerial but it will run all your lights and it'll keep your HVAC system there's a heater in there and there's and it has AC so if your AC set, wherever it's set at it's going to maintain that temperature in that cab it's going to keep on doing that and what that does is that prevents this build up of soot in your exhaust system so that you don't have to worry about that getting clogged up. So that, that'll help reduce that and you won't see near as many regions. Another thing you guys have convenient for you too for that regen to avoid going to regen, just shoot, run down the express. Yeah, get on this, get on the express. Run down the express way and come back. <laughs> It just depends on how much soot it builds up in it. And idle is the worst. When you're running down a highway, you're burning fuel pretty clean. But when you're sitting there idling, it's just continually building up that soot in there. Sorry, go ahead. If you inhibit it so many times, too, it's going to force you. You're going to have to go to the garage. So and if it ever becomes clogged, I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to derate the engine, and you're going to be in what's called limp mode. So you're going to be running about 20 mile an hour trying to get back to where you're going. But I don't think you guys are ever going to have that issue. Some of you guys are used to that. <laughs> <laughs> they practice it. <laughs> okay. Up here are a couple of the warning signs that he discussed. If you guys want to print this out and put this in the cab, it's perfectly fine. Uh, on the left there is your battery jumper studs. Uh, the front of the grill removes, and that lets you get to all your uh, truck checks, oil, washer fluid. Uh, transmission is actually on the keypad. Is it drive and or up and down at the same time? Yeah. yeah. This uh, this right here is in the driver's doorstep well. It, it's accessible. This way you don't have to tilt your cab if you need if your batteries get down or something. You have to. Picture from inside the cab. Uh, your aerial and PTO switch is all one switch. Flip it and your aerial is engaged and the PTO engaged at the same time. Same as your high idle. High idle is only going to get kicked up if uh, you flip on your outriggers or you're operating the aerial. Other than that, it's not going to be sitting there just high idle. Center console or your doghouse here. Driver's seat. Aerial technical information. We have a 100 foot four section rear mount aerial with four outriggers of a spread of 15 feet six inches. <clears throat> Tip load wet, 500 pounds, dry 500 pounds. You can flow water, 1,000 gallons per minute, 90 degrees side to side. <clears throat> Horizontal reach at zero is 94 feet. You can go up uh, from negative 10 to 75 degrees vertical. Uh, Front axle rating of 23,000 and 35 in a single rear. A 220 inch wheelbase. Standard height 11 feet 5 inches and a standard length of 3711. Here's a picture of the load chart. We're not going to hit this too hard in here, guys. It's easier to deal with that out there. <clears throat> Same as your short jacking capabilities. We'll go over that outside. Uh, the most important thing to know is you can short jack all four of these outriggers. It doesn't matter which way they are, or you can have them fully set. Obviously, fully set is going to be your best bet. And like Jeff had discussed, it's a truck placement thing. If you know your call or your scenes over here, pull the truck up to the left side of the street farther. Short jack those left driver side outriggers. Fully deploy your pass or your officer side. <clears throat> uh, The six foot pike pole is pretty good. If you take a six foot pike pole and put it on the body of the truck, that's a pretty good 
I'm just saying overall, reference. Right. Overall. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, I gotcha. We were, the fact we're at these we were at 10, 10 foot 4 inches or something like that. Anyway, and you can use that thing. It's got full range off to the side. It was extended. And it's not going to let you go to the side to short jack. It's going to stop you. It's going to allow you to go so it, far, and then it's going to stop you. It automatically you ramps either, you down. Yep. You can either elevate it or retract it or whatever you do to move out of that position once it stops you. Correct. That, that is a very good standard to go by, yeah. yes. Give yourself full capabilities on your operations side. Another neat feature that your guys' particular trucks have is... You can short jack an outrigger 36% and you can still get full extension with 250 pounds on the tip. The only thing is you cannot flow water when you do that. If you short jack two outriggers at 36%, you're not going to be able to do that. So one outrigger at 36%, you can fully extend it with 250 pounds on the tip. Set the cab for aerial operation. Shift the transmission from driving to neutral. Apply that park brake. Switch on the aerial master. The aerial master switch is, electrical, is the electrical power to the aerial device. At this uh, time, flashing lights on the outrigger will begin to sound. If somebody's at the back of the truck, they're going to hear a faint horn go off. That's just telling you. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> It is no, and important, you can't do step four without three, three without two, two without one. Once the ladder power is activated, the flashing lights on the inside of the outrigger jack tube will begin to flash. Outrigger is ready to operate. <clears throat> With the tires chalked, operator will proceed to the outrigger station. There's an outrigger not extended light, just a picture of an outrigger with a circle and a line through it. <clears throat> Move the outrigger on off switch to the on position. This will cause the high idle to engage and also an alarm will sound letting all personnel know that the outriggers are going out. <clears throat> Use the controllers. All they are is rocker switches. So you want the outriggers to go out, push them away from the truck. You want the outriggers to come in, push them towards the truck. You want them to go down, push them down. You want them to go up, push them up. <clears throat> position your jack pads underneath each jack location. At that aerial control panel, when you uh, turn on your outriggers, this screen will pop up. It's giving you a real-time slope and grade that your truck is sitting on without the outrigger set. As you move each outrigger, the right side of the screen here will give you a percentage. As that outrigger is going out, 10%, 20%, 30%, so on until 100%. It will shape, that outrigger will stay green, or gray, sorry. That outrigger will stay gray until the jack is set. So if you set that outrigger all the way out, put your jack down, it'll turn green when there's proper pressure on that outrigger. And as you're pushing down that outrigger, you'll notice your slope, side to side slope of the truck changes as each outrigger goes up. <clears throat> also, you have an aerial hour meter in here and your oil temperature. Side to side slope. Uh, like we had discussed earlier, you just need to get this within five degrees. Same as the front to back. Outrigger configuration, like I said, as each outrigger goes out, it gives a percent. Turns that color, and that color matches the sticker on the back of the outrigger also, <coughs> if you're a visual person. Aerial hour meter will track hours that the aerial has been operated. So if you just set it up and you're flowing water, it's not counting the time you're sitting there flowing water. It's just any time the aerial is moving. <clears throat> Outrigger control panel. Number one is the uh, A right there above the cab of the truck. That's your aerial elevation. That's going to give it, uh, that's degrees off of the cab you are. Two, which is B. That's giving you height from the ground to the tip of the aerial. Three is reach. 
That's uh, from the center point of the turntable to the tip of the aerial, how far you are reaching out of the truck. That is an important one if you're short jacked, depending on what short jack position you're in. If you're outside of that 36, 36% uh, mark, you'll only get so far out. And once we get a little bit farther into this, it'll show you what that, what I'm talking about there. <clears throat> Four, uh, the D on top of the ladder there is extension remaining. That's telling you how much farther out you can extend this aerial. Uh, <clears throat> five is E, right there in the back compartment. That's your rotation angle. Uh, left of the ladder bed is a negative number. Right of the ladder bed is a positive number. That's not for you guys to understand. That's more so the computer can decipher what side of the truck it's on. <clears throat> Six is your operational envelope. The arrows with the lines through them. Depending on what you're doing or how much weight or anything like that. Anytime you're doing something with the area you're not supposed to and it shuts you down, you'll see one of these. And it's telling you you can't do that and why. So if just right off the bat when you get up on the control stand, you're going to notice right and left disabled. Well, you're in the ladder bed, so you can't go left or right. If you're down too low and you're swinging in towards the cab, so far off of the cab, it's going to stop you and it's going to give a left disabled or right depending on which side of the cab you're coming into. Stuff like that. <clears throat> Number seven, green box with the ladders in it is your rung alignment. Eight is emergency stop indicator. Are you guys in the practice of when you are done with an aerial, you hit the emergency stop and then get down off the trucks? Okay, good. Stay with that. If you were, you would hit the E stop, get off the truck, and not be able to put your outriggers away. <clears throat> Uh, number nine is your load gauge. Depending how much weight you have on the tip, that'll change from green to amber to red. At red, it'll sound a horn, telling you you're overloaded. Uh, uh, ten is your outrigger not extended light. Like I said, uh, anytime your outrigger is not fully extended, so if you're 50%, 36%, whatever, you'll see that. Or if it's an outrigger that's shutting you down. Um, we, we allow you guys to operate your outrigger. If you lose one outrigger, we're not going to shut the aerial down. It's when you lose that second one that we will shut the aerial down. At that time, you'll see an outrigger not extended light. That's telling you, okay, it's an outrigger that's shutting me down. I either need to retract the aerial or raise it. <clears throat> Number 11, your auto bed indicator. Uh, the percentages on that is 20, 20, 20. So, 20 degrees left or right of the ladder bed, 20 degrees elevated, and about 20% extended. That little fire truck will show up in the corner. You push and hold the button. The ladder will retract, rotate over the ladder bed, and then drop down. Number 12 is your tracking light indicator. Push that, and your tracking lights come on. Uh, same as 13, which is your tip lights. 14 is a flow gauge and your PSI. So I'll tell you what you're flowing gallons per minute and uh, what the PSI is. 15 is your air horn button. 16 is the hydraulic tank temperature. 17 is the high-low switch. Rabbit's fast, turtle's slow. 18 is the dirty filter indicator. Anytime you see that light, take it down to the shop. One or more of the filters need to be changed. You're probably just going to change both of them so they're done at the same time. <clears throat> Load minder, uh, just so you guys have an approximate of what the weights are. At 400 pounds, you'll switch to yellow. At 500 pounds, it's going to flash to red. Once you exceed 500 pounds is when you get a caution symbol, a horn, and it's flashing at you telling you you're over. Hydraulic tank temperature, it's displayed in 10 degree increments. When the oil gets too hot, a warning icon will begin to flash over the red icon. Uh, continue operation of the aerial with such conditions could cause failure to the apparatus. Oil gets too hot, it starts burning up seals. It's not very common in a straight stick ladder. It's more heavy duty ladders. <coughs> Dirty filter indicator like we had talked. Uh, monitor controls, very simple to operate. 
up, down is right, raised lower. Now we switched them to right and left instead of being up is left, down is left. It's all according to which way the monitor is going. Uh, engine diagnostic screen gives you RPMs, coolant, temperature, oil, pressure, battery condition, transmission fluid, and fuel level. This is kind of new for you guys here. Uh, if anybody's played with any of the other Rosenbauer trucks that have a joystick, this is pretty easy to operate. Uh, first, we're gonna start with three, which is the trigger switch or the old dead man foot pedals. Push down on that. Your high idle is engaged as soon as you perform a function. Left is left, right is right, forward is down, back towards you is up. Roll your thumb forward, that extends the ladder. Roll your thumb back, that retracts. You're gonna find it very simple to do all three functions at one time, almost seamlessly. <clears throat> Picture the control stand here. Have an FRC intercom. Uh, you can no longer turn these intercoms off per NFPA. You can turn them down so you can't hear them, but you cannot turn them off. Up at the tip, it's hands-free. So anything that's set up at the tip is heard down at the turntable. So keep that in mind. Warning labels located all over the truck. Just become familiar with them. <clears throat> this is our uh, water pan. We want to lift the lever. Hold the locking pin, slide the locking lever rearward, and that will lock it into the lower section. That will be rescue mode. Reverse that operation to lock it into uh, water tower. The most important thing about this is make sure you are fully retracted when you're switching from rescue to tower. If you're not fully retracted and you switch down to rescue, extend the ladder out, charge the line, that water pan's coming flying off. <clears throat> so just make sure you're fully retracted. <clears throat> Flowing water from a relay, discharge water from a relay operation through the aerial device, connect incoming water source to the inlet at the rear. There is an air operated butterfly back there. On is water, off is no water. And then to the left of that is your aerial drain. Anytime you guys are done flowing water, raise the aerial up a little bit, pull that drain, let it drain out. We are always also bilging water out of that monitor at the tip. So if you retract it, you finish flowing water and you go ahead and retract it, whatever's left over in there is also gonna come out of the tip. That waterway drain just helps get everything below out. <clears throat> Overview, positioning of the truck, operation, placement and setup, operation of aerial from the turntable, and uh, moving water. Any questions, guys? <clears throat>